Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I set up my in-car camera whenever I jump on ACC, especially when I'm jumping in a new car, I always, always fiddle with the camera just to get an FOV and stuff, just how I like it. Now, if you're playing with a single monitor, then this should be a help to you. Triple screens, I've never used triple, so I wouldn't really know where the sweet spot is with that, but with a single screen, I do tend to have a certain preference in the um the way i like the camera so at the moment we're in the bmw i'm gonna be doing this just live guys so bear with me um at the moment i'm in the bmw you can see the camera at the moment is on default now there's two in-car cameras that most people will use there's either this one which is the first one or there is this one the static one that is more closer to the hood of the car um me personally i like this camera more for some reason the other camera has a little bit of movement when you're driving around and it just puts me off a little bit so let's go back to the original camera where you can see the wheel um now a lot of people like having the wheel on display me personally i'm not a big fan of the wheel being on display and if i do have to have it on display i will literally get rid of the hands because depending on where your seating position is at home sometimes your hands can almost be in the way um but let's start off by changing some stuff now for most people um they might mess with distance first or whatever but me i like to just get the fov down to where i like it it's normally between about 38 and 40 is normally where i like the fov now the difference in fov and difference in having the fov lower is your perception of speed completely changes so it, the track doesn't seem like it's coming at you as fast and i find it it, it makes it a little bit easier to judge certain corners and stuff like that um, when it goes faster, it feels like you're going rapid, but sometimes it makes hot corners harder to judge and break distances and stuff like that. So I normally mess with the FOV and then I will sort out the distance. Now, I'm not a fan of seeing all this in the way. I'm not a fan of seeing too much car, not enough track. So I normally will pull the distance forward a little bit. I, I tend to add a little bit of height. <laughs> I'm not the tallest in the world in real life, so I want I want a bit of that height, you know. I want to know what it feels like. Alright, so again we'll go forward. Now you might think, oh, but now you're missing some details off of your, your dashboard that you can't see. But if you go to um I think it is it is it this one? It's this one, right? If you go to this one, you can put display HUD on, and then once you go back onto the track. The display HUD pops out of the um pops out of the actual dash and then you have it on the screen. So no matter what you do with your camera, if you zoom it in even further or whatever, you always have the dash cam popped out so you can actually see what gear you're in, tire pressures and stuff like that. So that is what I always make sure I do. I make sure I have it popped out just in case, depending on what car I'm in, um, you know, how how forward I want the, the camera or how high I want the camera. Um drivers hands you can have it on both a lot of the time for me i just look at my wheel so i have it hidden a lot of the time so it doesn't interfere with my vision and stuff like that um of course you can also change the opacity of the dashboard as well it doesn't have to be sort of like a big block on your screen so you can maybe pull it down to 60 save drive and it's sort of see-through on the screen but I didn't actually mind it, so I, I'd keep it at 100. Um, I normally keep that at 100. Um, I've got the driver hands and wheel hidden. Now, if we go to motion, if you want to get that sort of motion where you're driving the car, but the car sort of, when you turn, it sort of looks at the apex of the corner, then that is look with wheel. And I will show you guys that a little bit. Some people have this too high, in my opinion. Um, it does help a, a tad, but as I said, I don't really drive on this camera that much and I really wouldn't go beyond 15%. So if we, if we actually start up the car and we'll be able to see, um, what it actually does when we get to the first chicane. Well, I mean the, the, the last chicane, should I say. So it looks towards the corner just just a tad and sometimes 
you know, a lot of people, if you're not in VR, it can be quite helpful. If you if you used to turn it up more than this, then it it sort of it sort of puts me off. And I've seen a few people. I think is it. I think it might be Yorkie that has it super high, and it's it's very. I I can't get used to that, man. So go back to motion. Let's put look with wheel up to forty five percent. Just to, just to um, exaggerate it a little bit. Um, turn to garage. Continue. So we're going to drive, we're going to drive into the last chicane again. Now watch how much it looks towards the apex. A lot of camera movement. Now for me personally, I can't get used to that much movement, but some people do like it. Bear me, guys. I'm actually driving with one foot at the moment. <laughs> not, not that I've, I've broken my leg or anything like that. I'm just, I'm not properly sat in front of my wheel, so I'm driving with one foot um, to try and show you guys quickly what all the different things do. Now, mainly like the zoom is fine. Maybe it feels a little bit slow, so I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to go backwards on the FOV a little and maybe pull the distance in. A little bit more. I think we should be should be in somewhat of a sweet spot. Yeah, I'll still say the um the look with Will is a little too high. I, I, for me personally, I wouldn't have it as high as um, 45. I think it's a little too much. I just like it very subtly. So for me, I, I, I wouldn't go above 20, but that's just that's just me. Um, again, you can see that the, the bonnet and the, the camera does have a, a little bit of movement. Um, you can change that, but I, I don't mess with this camera too much because I just prefer the static um, camera that is on pretty much on the bonnet of the car. So. Let's go ahead and we'll save that, we'll return and then we'll flip to the next camera, which is, this is the camera that I actually use. Um, and this is how it comes default and default, uh, I'm not really a big fan because for me, it's sort of like half and half. Half of the screen is the track, the other half is the car and I feel like it's just too much, too much car. I don't need to see all this. So let's go into the view settings for this and again. We're going to put our FOV down, maybe to 40. I'm going to give it some height. And I just, I just love this camera because there's, you can see so much of the track now. That's pretty much how I like to drive. And again, we're going to go to, um, the display HUD is on. So it's already popped out for me. So obviously here you can see, I would only be able to see half of the, um, the actual onboard information on on the car dash but because i've got all the information popped out i don't lose any visuals for myself in terms of gears and tire pressures and tc control and stuff like that and you can see you can see so much of the track and that's what i like i like to see a lot of track and not too much car also the bar on the left hand side of the car where you be going through certain corners you won't you wouldn't be able to see because the sort of the frame of the car is like in the way and that, that's the worst i think in the lexus is probably one of the worst cars where you literally cannot see the frame can't see around the frame and left handers and it is so jarring man so jarring on this on this setting i don't think you can have look with wheel i believe if i'm not mistaken um hidden. no you can't have look with wheel on this camera or can you or, I don't think it matters. I don't think you can change this, but I don't think it actually changes. I'm sure of it. Yeah, it doesn't change. That's why it's grayed out at the moment. Um, you can change the movement though. I've never actually tried to change the movement on this camera, but I wouldn't. I prefer static because it just gives me a level of visuals that is always the same. And 
doesn't fluctuate or change my perception of anything because the perception is everything man once your perception starts getting changed for certain corners and yeah it can really mess you up really mess you up but those settings are sort of close sometimes i might play with the camera pull it in a little bit further so i get rid of the top of the car and then i add a little bit more height and then that'll be it and it allows me to see all the corners it, like a lot of people play on bonnet cam but you know you don't really if you set the in-car camera up right you don't need bonnet cam mate you just you just don't need it you can still see <laughs> okay you can still see corners come in as long as you you're able to set up your in-car camera perfectly well i think there is um there's no real need to uh use a bonnet cam especially on acc man not on acc and then obviously guys if you put <coughs> if you like to put your camera up you can change your pitch make it look down a little or if you don't like your camera as as high you can change your pitch so as if the driver's head is looking up and not just sat in a in a taller position um other than that what else do i need to cover um obviously you've got your mirrors and stuff like that fov for your mirrors which is the standard that's just depends what you like how big you like your mirror to um show up with cars in the background now projection correction is a weird one because it actually changes the shape of your actual um of the of the window of the car pretty much so if i change that you can see it sort of creates like a bubble effect right so it's pretty weird i i remember i used it one time for a little while but no i i like to keep it as standard um but for me in the bmw the, these would probably be the settings that i would go to for sure um i'll make sure i can see loads of the track i don't need to see a lot of the dash i don't need to see this camera here um the, the rear view camera and i just have the dashboard popped out so everything is within my eyesight and very easy to see that's my main thing it's all about visibility um in some other cars you have to do a little bit more work because some cars that the visual you know the visuals are not as nice not as straightforward to see so let's jump across into another car so now here we are in the bentley and as you can see i've already got the um the hud popped out and the bentley is even worse for visibility than the bmw look how small the screen um, not the, the windscreen looks look how much track you can see compared to how much car you can actually see you can see way more of the car than you can the track and as i said different cars um require a little more work in terms of setting up your your visuals like for instance this car this, to me this is just terrible like i'm seeing way too much of stuff that i just don't need to see i don't need to see all this interior it's pretty much pointless for me so let's go into the viewer settings and this is the first camera which normally has the hands on so i think oh, let me turn the hands back on so there you see the steering wheel um and now what i would do for sure i'm going to zoom the fov in let's actually go to about 42 and actually i'm going to i'm going to push the distance in a lot more right go back a little bit go up a little bit and there you go for me that feels pretty decent now i've eradicated a lot of the um a lot of the dash that i could see before but even so it's still you know still a good chunk um of the screen of the windscreen is sort of the shape of the windscreen is the visibility is definitely not as good as the bmw the bmw you can see loads um but i feel for this camera it's not too bad you know i can see what i need to see you still see the hands and stuff like that if you want to keep the hands on me personally i prefer to to turn them off so there you go if you're a fan of having the hands on you can keep them on but let's 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 go into the the next camera i'm gonna return let's go into my favorite camera which is this one and again um why a lot of um dash we can see not as bad as the one before but 
definitely need some changing. So let's have a look, see, reduce that FOV a bit more. That distance in, add a bit of height, be more, more distance, I think. Bit more height for me. In fact, let me change. Um, put more of the distance. See, I don't want this sort of big space under here. I think it's, it's a little too much for me. Looks a, looks a little weird. 37 is, is probably the limit of where I'm where I would go in terms of zooming the car in. I think we'll, we'll have to deal with that, I think. See how it looks while driving. So we can see, now you can see again on this camera, we get way more of the windscreen. Now I know we can't really see it on our left hand side, but for me, in terms of lapping and consistency, I always feel like I can see lots of the track on this camera, you know? And for me, that that's, that has always been the main goal. I just like to see a lot of track. I don't like to see a lot of the in-car bits that I don't need to see. So guys, I hope this did help you out in terms of what you guys want to do with your FOV settings. I know there is technically a correct way to set up your fov perfectly for your eyesight but for me the, the general settings for myself is i just want to see as much track as possible and i don't need to see as much of the in-car camera um as what i do see and that was one of the main reasons why i didn't like acc on the on the on the console because you couldn't change your fov settings and it was so jarring it just it just didn't i had to drive on cameras that i just wasn't comfortable with so um I think that's one of the biggest L's on console that ACC probably has. But on PC, obviously, you can change that stuff. Anyway, guys, it's Cryptic TNG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.